Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about five ways in which you can create dates in Power Query. I keep getting these problems repeatedly on YouTube comments, on blog comments, one after the other. And I thought I'll just make a quick and simple video to help you understand that if you don't really have everything that you would want to create a date with, how can you still be able to create a date in five different ways? No further ado, let's go. All right, example number one. You can see that I have the month column, the year column, but I don't really have a date column. Now, when you get data like this, some people are going to shy away from creating a date. And if they don't create a date, you would not be able to work with the date table in your Power BI model. How can you still create a date even though you just have the month and the year and just the month number and the year? It's very simple. You can actually go over to the add columns tab and create a custom column. Let's just name this column as a date column. The function that I'm going to use to be able to create a date is a hash date function. It's very simple. So I'm just going to write hash, which is the pound sign. Sometimes you would like to call it that as well. So hash date, the first part of hash date is nothing but the year. So I'm going to write, hey, what's the year? The year is the year. Now note that in the hash date, every single input that I'm going to write, the year, the month and the date needs to be in the numeric or the number format. If in case any particular year, month or day is in the text format, you need to convert that to a number first and then input that in the function. So the first part is the year and you can see that it is currently ABC123. That means that it is going to be recognized as a number as well. Pretty good. So I'm just going to put a comma and after that I will write the month number and I'll put a comma. Now, since I don't really have the date, I can assume the date to be at the first of the month. So I can just write one here close the bracket and commit to the formula. And what I'm going to get is a date. Now, the most obvious step that people are going to do is change the data type of this particular column and mark it as a date column. But that's not needed. What I could do is I could go over to the add columns tab. And as the last input of this particular column, I can specify the type of this column to be a date. Just reduce the font size a bit. And you can see that I have converted that particular column into a date column by inputting the last variable as a date data type. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, in example number two, what I have is the month name and the year. Now we can't really use the hash date function because this happens to be the name of the month and this is not a numeric that we can input that in the hash date function. So what do we do about that? Now this particular example is simpler than the previous one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to the add columns tab and create a custom column. And I'm just going to concatenate the month name and the year even without a delimiter is absolutely fine. How do we do that? I'm going to name this column as date and I'm just going to concatenate. So concatenate the month, the and symbol, the concatenation symbol and the year after that. And then just click on OK after that. And it just gave us an error. Let's just go find out what the error is just for a second. So if I just maybe click on the side of the error, it says that, hey, I'm trying to concatenate the word Jan, which is a text with 2021, which happens to be a number. It's uh, ABC123, which is it's reading this as a number. And you can't really concatenate a number with a text. So what do we need to do is we need to convert the year, which is currently as a number into a text before the concatenation happens. Let's just do that. I'm going to go back to my formula and I'm going to say that this year needs to be converted into a text. So I'm going to use a very simple function called text dot from F R O M and can like just wrap the year around that and click on okay. And this absolutely works fine. Now, as of now, what we have been able to, it's just the concatenation. This is not a date. So I'm going to change the data type to a date. And if I just go ahead and declare this as a data type of date, this is actually going to be a date data type. And this is going to be working just good. All right. In example number three, I have just the year. There is no month or there is no month number as well. How do I convert this into a date? All that I'm going to do is concatenate the year with the start of the year, which is the 1st of January, or with the end of the year, which is 31st of December. That's all that I'm going to do. And this is going to give us a valid date. So if I just go over to the added custom that I have created already, and I'll show you the code for that, all that I have done is use the hash date function, and I have concatenated the year alongside. I have done that with the month of Jan and the 1st of Jan. That's all that I have done. Should you want, you can also concatenate that with the end of the year. Not really concatenation, but feeding the year function with the two numeric inputs. I think that's it. And once you have the date, you can also input the last parameter, which is where you declare this as an exclusive data type of date. All right, example number four. 
This one is a slight weird one, but people do get such once in a while, and this is very, very easy to solve. Take a look. We sort of have the entire date concatenated year, month, and the day format all in one string without leaving any spaces or any, any kind of delimiter. The first four characters here are the year, the next two characters are the month, and the last two characters are the date. And all of that is concatenated, concatenated into a single piece of string. How do we deal with that? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert this into a date data type directly and let's just see what happens. So if I just go to ABC123 and convert that to a date, you can see that I do get a few errors. Maybe this was not really found as a valid date and Power Query threw us an error. Now, if you take a look at the previous step, in the previous step, Power Query was trying to read this particular thing as a number and this was converted as a text. Now, I'm not really sure why Power Query discriminates a few of the items as numbers and few of the items as text, but the solution is pretty simple. All that we do is if we just come here and convert this entire column into a text first, say, okay, all of this is now left aligned. And then if we ch change the type to a date, this is going to be a valid date created automatically and no hassles. All right, the last example is very, very common. Example number five, please take a look. In this particular example, I have a simple date column. Now, the problem is that my computer reads the date in the Indian format DMY, but the dates that I have received here are in the American format, which is where the month is first, the date is second, and the year is last. Now, obviously, if my computer tries to read 31 as the month, obviously, it's going to error out and it's not going to create a valid date. How do we solve this problem? Now, first of all, I'm going to teach you a manual way, not really a manual way, but a user interface way to be able to solve this problem. Take a look at that. And then we'll try to reduce the steps and try to solve that in just one go by creating some bit of M code. Please take a look. Now, the first thing to do is, obviously, I need to convert this into a data type of US date settings and not my computer date settings. And that could be easily done through a local format. So let's just try to do that. I'm going to click on ABC123 click on using local and right here it's going to give me a data type i'm going to say that this is going to be a date but not the indian date it's going to be the us date so i'm going to say english united states where are you right here say okay and this works just fine there is a problem although if you take a look at the dates the first three dates are absolutely valid the month has now turned from 31st month which is not valid to the 12th month this is valid this is valid but if you take a look at the last date, which was earlier, the date of May should have been the date of January. But now if I take a look at the current step, it is still the date of May and it's not really the date of January. And this is kind of incorrect, right? So if half the dates have been converted in the US format and half the dates are still sticking to the old format, but they should have been converted into the correct format. So what do I do about this? Now, the first thing that I would do in order to solve this manually through the user interface is strip off the time stamp right here. So what I can do is using some delimiter kind of thing. So I can say something like trans transform. In the transform tab, I can say that I would like to extract a text before a delimiter and the delimiter is nothing but a space, say OK, and the delimiter is extracted. Now, this entire column is a text-based column. And now, if you try to convert that into an American date or the US date, you can see that now this date belongs to the month of January, which is correct. Now, we had to add this particular step in between, but I don't really want to do that. I want to do all of that work that I have been able to do, stripping and all of that kind of stuff, into just one step and make this uh, go. So let's see what can we do about this. Although the work that I'm going to do now to be able to clean up this date column could have been done on this very column itself, but I'm going to create a new column and start to do the work there because it's just easier to understand. So take a look. In the Add Columns tab, I'm just going to click on a custom column to create a new column and start creating a date. Now, the thing that I want to check is that, uh, is that a different format than the other formats right here. All of these are text format, but this one is a date time format. And I really want to check if you are a date time or not. To be able to do that, I'm going to use a simple function value.type. Now value.type function is the function that helps you identify that the value in the cell is what type. Is it a number? Is it a text? What type is that? So I'm just going to feed the date right here, close the bracket. And I'm going to say, is that equal to a date time dot type or not? 
I'm just gonna say okay and let's just see what we get now since this is not a date time format so false for that false for that false for that and for the last one since that is in the date time format I get a true for that now pretty good I have been able to identify that this is the cell that I want to treat differently when I'm doing my transformations now what I want to do with this cell is the same thing that I just did earlier which is strip off the timestamp from this particular thing that means this needs to go away how do I do that I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say if, if this entire function is uh, giving you a true value, then in that case, I just want to have date extracted. So I'm just going to say date dot from, from this particular date column. Else, I just want to have the date. Close the bracket. And I think this is good to go. I think I have made a mistake. Uh, let's just oh I have not written the then part okay now you can see that I have written a simple if function in the if function I'm saying that hey this particular thing if it's giving you a true that means you are a time based um, data point in that scenario please just give me the date and just remove the timestamp from it okay and otherwise just give me the very value that you have it in the cell I'm just gonna say okay and what I get is a date right here with the timestamp removed but as of now, I would like to convert this thing into a text format and not really a number format, although I've just got the date, but you can see that, that this is still right aligned. That means this is still a number. So I'm just gonna, not really a number, but a date. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna say that, hey, to be able to convert this into a text, I'm gonna wrap this around in the text.from function and convert this into a text instead. Now, click, click on okay. And all of this is now a text. Now you would assume that now we can go ahead and apply the data type which is nothing but using local but we're not going to do that. Take a look. So I'm just going to go back to this particular function and in this function for all of these text values that I have I'm going to pull out a date but not in the Indian format in the US format. So I'm going to say something like date dot from. Now date dot from is giving you all of these text values and I would like to take the date from these values but not in the Indian format, in the US format. So I'm just gonna say that the format, which is the second input, the culture input of date.from, that the format needs to be American, which is EN, uh, short letters, uh, and then US, uppercase letters, and then close the bracket and press enter. And what we get is the valid date, which is where this particular month is the month of January. Now, since we are adding a column, we might as well create this into a valid date. That means this should not be ABC123. This should be a date, which we have seen it before. I can just say that this is going to be a type of date. Problem solved. You can keep this column and remove this column and all of the work was done in just one go. All right, that was all about this. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment. But also, if you're struggling with any typical database issues, please do not hesitate to put those in the comments as well. I'd be glad to take a look and try to give you a solution for that as well. In the end, a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're starting out with Power BI. And DAX and Power Query seem very hard and you'd like to master these skills right from the fundamentals and then proceed on to solving you know, more complex problems. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.